The A word, Luke. Yeah, the A word. You can read um interview with Peter Boker, the writer who um Boker Boker. Our... Yeah, could be. Um <laughs> <laughs> That my, our, our friend Katie Brent did. You can also read her review, which is now live on the site, thecustardtv.com. Actually, she's put personal details in this, writing this as she's a mother who is going what, through... What, like a home phone number or something? Well, no, not quite, but she's oh, okay. a mother going through the getting a diagnosis state, so she uh, oh, oh, knows wow. a bit more about the uh, process it's than perhaps anyone else. Very personal to it, then. Yes, yeah, very yeah. personal to it, and she could see... Parallels. I yeah. think she would. She would say that they rushed through the actual diagnosis bit quite quickly. But apart mm. from that, the rest of it. There was, was quite... a lot of fluff, wasn't there? In this, there was a lot. There of was. Just it's it's needless. a shame. Uh, basically, do you want me to do the setup again? Yeah, you do the setup. Yeah. <laughs> this was about a family. You set them up. I'll knock them down. <laughs> living <laughs> in um, the Lake District, a couple played by Lee Ingleby and uh, Morgan Christie. Uh, and they, she has a daughter from a previous marriage, and they, yep. uh, her and Lee Ingleby have a son. Um, Joe. He's quite introverted, spends a lot of time singing along to music in his headphones. Um, and, it's and it's not it's... contemporary music either. It's music no. from the well, late eighties, oh, early nineties, and the Arctic Monkeys. Yeah. Um, but there's and... a lot of un- there's a lot of uh, buzzcocks Buzz in Buzz there. Cox. Julian Cope, uh, Human League, a lot of that era. Yeah. There, um, and early on, he has his sixth birthday. Arriving for his birthday, we've got Christopher Eccleston, who plays his granddad, and also Greg McHugh and Vinette Robinson. Greg yeah. McHugh is Morvan Christie's brother, and Vinette Robinson is his wife, who's recently cheated on him. They've mm-hmm. moved back to the area so he can take over the family brewery. And she, as a doctor, recognises certain signs in Joe that will point towards him being on the autistic spectrum and the rest of it is the parents looking into it, getting the diagnosis and trying to deal with the diagnosis. You say there was a lot of fluff and yeah. I um, as I say online um, Katie spoke to Pete and he said he didn't want the autism side to to overwhelm the audience and I think that was perhaps a, the wrong thing to do because actually Mm. I think he felt he had to throw in well, stuff you, about an affair, you, stuff about a grandma. You say that a lot of. Um, we did not mention that this was based on a Israeli series. Israeli called, series, yeah. Called Yellow Peppers, and I did read sort of a synopsis of this, and basically it does feel very similar. the The story about the, you know, the, the brother and the wife is in the original series. Oh, okay. So it wasn't it wasn't you know created purely for this. It was based on the original series. That was one of the okay. stories. But the the threesome: Morvan Christie, Lee Ingleby, and newcomer Max Vento. Brilliant as a, as a fam- very believable as a little family unit. Mm, I definitely. thought all the stuff that centered on his autism and Max's performance felt very genuine. The last not ten minutes school. with the the whole you know the footballing assessment class, you know? and the football. Mm. Yeah, that was heartbreaking. He's a lovely boy, yeah. He's polite, he's affectionate, he makes eye contact, and he loves his music. Thank you for being so patient with him. And with me, (laughs) especially me. I know sometimes I can be a bit of a prick, you know. Look, I'm going to write my own report, but I can talk you through the test results now. I don't believe in keeping people waiting. You were right to bring him to Dr. Eschel. And she was right to refer him to me. He does have significant problems. What kind of problems? Communication, auditory processing, emotional responses, self-soothing behaviours. Um, if you look at the tests, in many areas, he is way above average. Sorry, I know you're the expert. But is that really so different from any other kid? No, because he's five years old. But he will be. Did Dr. Eschel mention the autism spectrum at all? No. <laughs> Why would she? I don't know very much about autism, but um, from what I do know, there's no way he's got... He has problems processing emotions. He has problems with his auditory processing. Yeah, you keep saying that. I don't know what it means. I'm sorry. It means there's nothing wrong with his hearing, but he has trouble making sense of what he hears and prioritising them. 
Like I'm prioritising this conversation over the sound of my email alerts. That's not him. That, sorry, but he talks. He sings. He has a wide vocabulary and he uses that to keep everyone at a social distance. His singing is another way to keep everyone out. To protect him from what he finds difficult. Communication. Emotions. Well, that just sounds like every man I know. Right. But Joe has these problems to the extent that it limits his capacity to learn and change. So are you saying he's autistic? I do believe he's on the autism spectrum, yes. But he's not autistic. That's not how I describe anyone with autism. So you think he has autism? Yes. But the first thing you have to understand is that autism isn't a single condition. And it's not a disease. It's a set of behaviours that cause difficulty in social communication. OK, well, here you are saying that autism's hard to pin down, so how can you even say that it's autism for sure? I'm afraid it isn't going to go away if we call it something different. Where are you going to go with the A word, though? I don't know if I'm going to stick with it. I don't know. It's just... I, I liked it. If it went for all the sort of the sex stuff, like the, the subplot with... Obviously, Greg McHugh and Vinette Robinson, there was a whole sort of thing with them in bed together, and then there was a subplot where Christopher Eccleston and, and Pookie Quenzel, he was doing singing lessons with her, and she basically said, do you want to be friends with benefits? And it's just, it's bits like that. And Lee and Gubby was always trying to get his leg over. And it felt all, of, that all felt a bit tacked on to me. Like, mm. oh, it's after nine o'clock. We have to do something a bit risky. We, we, we can do this and people will want us to do mm. this. So we will. I agree.